Hi guys, here we go with our video 6.1, Kinetics and Collision Theory. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is what's called kinetics, right? In the word, it sounds like kinetic from kinetic energy, so it's probably going to have something to do with motion, well, sort of more like speed. So kinetics is the study of the rate, speed, at which reactions occur. Now, so far this year, right, we learned a little bit about different kinds of chemical reactions, but we didn't talk much about the mechanism. You'll learn more about that sort of thing in college. But the important thing to know in, re in uh, high school chemistry is that reactions, like a recipe, have multiple steps, right? So whenever you're baking something, you step one, step two, step three, you get out your ingredients, you mix the dry things together, you add the wet stuff, you mix it up, you put it in the oven, and it bakes. And with a chemical reaction, there's multiple steps like that as well. Now, as far as the speed of the reaction, a reaction is only as fast as its slowest step. So even if some steps of reaction are super duper fast, if you have a step that takes a very long time, there's no speeding up the overall reaction to go faster than that longest step. Okay, collision theory. Collision theory is the rate is the rate of a reaction depends on how often and how hard reacting particles collide with one another. So here we have different particles moving around, and they can't react if they don't bump into one another, right? Like this one here and this one here. They're gonna bypass each other and not react. However, these two particles bump into each other and then they're able to react. And the speed at which a reaction takes place depends on how often and how hard particles collide with one another. Now, correct orientation is important, too. If you can remember from biology when you learned about enzymes and the lock and key, right? If you have right key and a lock, if they don't, sorry, the other way around, lock and key, if they're not oriented to fit into one another properly, nothing will take place. So with a lot of uh, substances, they need to be facing the right way when they bump into each other for a reaction to take place. More collisions equals faster reaction. Okay, the next uh, few things we're gonna talk about all pertain to this. Things that cause there to be more collisions will lead to a faster reaction. So what are some of these things that are gonna cause this? One, a higher temperature. Now this you kind of know, right? With higher temperature, particles move faster or quicker, and they can collide more frequently. Right? We've learned that temperature is related to the average kinetic energy. So the higher the temperature, the higher the average kinetic energy, so the faster they're moving. A higher concentration there's more particles, there's going to be more collisions, right? More traffic on the roads, more car crashes, more particles in a chemical reaction, more collisions. Higher pressure. Now, of course, this only applies to gases. Remember, pressure doesn't affect solids and liquids, only gases. It's going to push those gas particles closer together so they can collide more frequently greater surface area. A powder will react more quickly than a large block of a substance. Right? If you can remember from uh, biology when you were learning about digestion, you know, right when you have in the small intestine, you have the villi. That's going to give a greater surface area for absorption. Absorption can take place faster with greater surface area. Same thing in a reaction you're going to get more collisions when there's a greater surface area. So powder reacts faster than a block of a substance. Catalyst. Right, you learned about enzymes in biology. They speed up reactions. So catalysts include enzymes as well as non-biological catalysts. And they speed up reactions by lowering what's called the activation energy. We're going to learn about this in a couple of uh, lessons. But for now, the activation energy is the energy required to break the initial bonds. And the bond types. 
affected. Ionic substances tend to react faster than covalent substances. All right, that brings us to question time. Need to be ready to answer in class. What factors speed up the rate of chemical reactions? Okay, take a little bit of time, go back and rememberize those different reaction type, these uh, the different factors that speed up reaction that you just saw. Because when I do quiz you on these in class, I'm going to make you close your book and you're going to have to remember those. All right, that brings us to the end. I'll see you guys in school.